Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I'm Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from around the United States and around the world. Tonight, we're going to be having some fun with stencils. I'm going to show you a fun way that you can use your stencils like you would embossing folders to create lots of texture, and then we can color them with different things like ink pads. You can also use watercolor to do this if you want. I'm going to be sticking with ink pads because it's easy and it's clean and simple, the kind of the way I like it, but I know some of you always take things up a notch, so you'll be able to use all your different coloring medium, media, medium, mediums, media, media that's plural, <laughs> coloring media for this. It feels better to say mediums, doesn't it? I know it's wrong, but it just feels better to me. Well, anyway, before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, <laughs> crafters. You can say mediums. Mediums, it just feels better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess we're into winter now. Oh, right? we are totally into winter. Big blizzard coming across the country and headed our way. Quilt weather. Yeah, it really is. It is quilt, it's quilt weather. It's You get under a blanket, you get too cozy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the thought of like going into the garage even is, is like painful. Oh my gosh, this morning I had to put recycling out. It was so cold in the garage and it hasn't even gotten cold yet. We are expecting sub-zero temperatures here in the uh, upper Midwest. I know a lot of you guys are from the Midwest area and you're already giving me weather reports because it's already coming across for some of you. So, And some of you in the South are freezing and I know you're not used to it and I feel so bad for, for you guys because <laughs> you guys don't even like have coats and stuff, do you? Some of you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> so, but we're all going to make it through. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like a white Christmas. I just love the snow at Christmas. It's the only time I like it, but it certainly brings to mind all the cards that we've made together all season. That's for sure. Well, Tom, um, tonight we're going to be, I showed you a little snippet of something that I tried. What did you think of tonight's technique? Very interesting. Yeah, I had to look at it like all different angles. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't even, when I told you what I was going to try to do, you're like, wait, are, are you going to ink through the stencil to create embossing? So it's really fun. And I think you guys will like it. I did this once before a while ago, like right after COVID broke out and we were all staying home and doing that. So it's been a while and it's always fun to do a new twist or new color. So Tom will be back in a little bit. Now, I do want to show you something that a friend of ours, Sonia Meyer, sent us a present. And I have to show it to you because it's so beautiful. And it's about our community, but it made me cry when I read it. I was trying to read it to Tom today and I, I cried when I read it. But I want to show you how beautiful this is. So let's do an overhead shot. Look at this. So Sonia wrote this poem and I'm going to read it to you. And she then like did it all beautiful with dyes and she printed it and had it matted. So we're going to hang it here in our studio because it's so beautiful. And it says, thank you, Gina and Tom, which is so sweet. And you guys don't have to thank us. We love being here with you. It says, for your wonderful YouTube videos and the way you make us all laugh, for the laid back way you teach the techniques of each of your paper crafts, for all your talented designers and customer service to boot, for your uplifting quotes through difficult times and the cowboy fun, what a hoot. <laughs> for your humility, love, and kindness, and the cards you give away, for Tom's guitar in the background and his wonderful words of the day, for our Facebook group and community that's welcoming, safe, and warm, always full of great encouragement, a real calm amidst life's storms. For all of these things and fruit salad, I think you'll, you're both the bomb. You're certainly better than horrible. So thank you, Gina and Tom. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh, I love <laughs> I love it so much. So Sonia, I think we saw you earlier in the comments. We love it. It arrived safe and sound and it's going right on the wall right here where I like right next to me here on the wall so I can look at it and love it all the time. Thank you so much for your kindness. And you've got quite a way with words. Definitely made me tear up. All right. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to use stencils as an embossing type of tool. And this is going to give us so many more possibilities to creating texture on our cards. So I have a couple stencils here. I thought this mega flower is a fun one. 
This one is a really fun one. I think this is called, called Flower Garden. I don't even know the names of all the stencils. Definitely have to do Stellar Snowflake. And what's fun is you can create just a texture like this if you want to use something like Fizzy to create a dotted background. Or you can use a stencil that has more of a focal image look like this Stellar Snowflake. Now you can also take this whole thing up a notch and you can do something like a layering stencil where you stencil one layer and then you emboss the second layer and then stencil over that to create more texture. Now it's a little hard to see all of the texture on screen, but when you do it in person and you hold the piece, you can see all of the texture coming through on the cardstock. So let's try a couple of these things and I'll show you how much fun these are. Plus you can use them in two different directions, which is also really fun. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this Stellar Snowflake is always a favorite of mine. And when you do embossing with a stencil, you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of extra pressure in there because this is very thin compared to an embossing folder. Okay. And um, let's get the, let's get the die cutting machine out here first. All right, there we go. Here it is. So you're going to start now every embossing machine, every die cutting machine is going to be different. So you're going to want to use whatever setting you normally use for embossing folders. All right, but you're going to add a little bit of extra in there. So I will show you. So we're going to start with the basic platform here. The, this is the platform for the Spellbinders machine. And then we're going to lay down the rubber mat. Now, this rubber mat comes with this machine. Pretty much every machine comes with some sort of rubber mat. If you don't have a rubber mat, they have a rubber mat at Spellbinders. You can pick it up at your local stores. You can pick it up at um, some of the bigger stores like Simon Says Stamp. Don't know if they have it at big box stores like Hobby Lobby and Michaels, but you can find it fairly easily online. It's the rubber mat for the Spellbinders die cutting machine. And I think each die cutting machine probably has... Uh, their own mat. So you might want to, if you have a big shot, look and see which mat the big shot recommends. If you've got something else, you know, check because this might be too thick for your machine. But whatever rubber mat you have, and some of you probably have it tucked away because you never really used it for anything. Um, but it's a great tool. Now let's start here with this snow, the mega snowflake, the mega, the stellar snowflake. Um, stencil. So what I want to do here is I want to actually put my cardstock down first and I'm going to use a six by six piece of cardstock and then I'm going to lay the stencil right on top. Now if you don't want a full six by six that's totally fine. Just pick the size of cardstock that you want and then lay the stencil where you want it to emboss. It's okay if it's hanging over. It's okay if it puts a little impression in the rubber mat. It's not going to stay. Okay, and then you're going to use your embossing plate for your die cutting machine. So I'm going to do that next. I'm going to lay that on top and make sure that that is going through the machine. Okay, and then I like to use a shim of some sort. So here is a piece of cardstock that I can use as a shim. Now I can put that through there. And if I really want it to be extra heavy in the center, because sometimes it doesn't emboss as deeply in the center as it does around the perimeter, you can add one more little piece of cardstock in there. But check and make sure you don't want to put too much pressure on it. Um, you don't want to break your machine. Um, but, you know, you do want to have enough pressure. So that might be a little, a little hard to get through. So let's see here. Now I need to really give this a little boost through. There we go. Okay, you can see. Now I'm just going to lay this on top once I get it started. And then I'm going to hold it up here at the top and I'm going to just really kind of struggle my way through. If you have, um, it does help to miss the cardstock. If you want, you can definitely do that. You don't have to though. Just decide, um, you know, some stencils are thicker than other stencils. So just kind of decide 
which, you know, if you want to try it. It won't hurt at all to mist it though. So if you want to mist it, that's totally fine. Probably didn't need this extra piece of cardstock, but I ran it through anyway. You can see I ran it through kind of slow because it was hard to get through. Now, if you've got an electric die cutting machine like the Gemini or something like that, just refer to your manual on how to use an embossing folder. The cardstock is heavy cardstock. This piece was 100 pound cardstock. If that's too thick for your machine, use a lightweight. So, your first couple ones are really your test ones to figure out what a good combination is for you. Okay, so now I ran that through and I'm going to peel off the stencil. And can you see that beautiful design in there? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? You can really see it more on the other side, too. Now, it's not quite as deep as an embossing folder, but it is absolutely stunning. It's so elegant. Um, misting kind of softens the cardstock a little bit and it helps the impression get in there a little bit better and it prevents it from cracking. So you can also mist your cardstock before you use embossing folders if you find that whatever sandwich you're using is cracking the paper and it doesn't give you that smooth design. By doing a little spritz of water, just a little mist of water over it, you'll it makes it not crack as much. So I just love that look. I like it just like this. This is really pretty and ready to be a beautiful soft background of a card. But I wanna show you some cool looks that you can get with it. So let me grab a piece of cardstock here. It's great to see everybody coming in. This is our last live before Christmas. It's actually gonna be my last video before Christmas because I am behind and I do need a little bit of time to get caught up. So I hope you guys don't mind. We will miss you through the holiday, but we'll be back next Tuesday night. It won't be too, too long. And you guys are gonna be busy too. Okay, so there's a couple ways that we can do this. I'm thinking, let's try a little bit of, should we do sea glass or turquoise sea? Let's try a little sea glass. It's out. It just was sitting here. I might as well try it. So there's two different looks that you can get from this. So you can try something simple like taking a little turquoise sea ink. I like to do an ink cube when I'm doing the side that's puffed out. This is the puffed out side where you can feel it on top. And this is the recessed side where you don't feel it on top. It's pressed in. So when I'm doing this, I like to take an ink cube because it's very easy to control and just lightly rub the ink cube over the design. See how pretty that is just coming out so nice and you can really add a little bit of texture this way. And it's okay if you get it on the rest of the paper, you get little marks here and there. You can even go over it with a blending brush afterwards. But I love how it's a rough texture when you do it this way. So it's not the same. It doesn't look the same as ink blending. You can see all that texture. It kind of grabs around the edges. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. I just think that is so pretty. And you can mix colors on it. So let's say you wanted to use um, another color. Let me find a little purple. We'll try a little bit of, we'll try a little of, no, let's try a little bit of the medium lilac in there. So you can add a little bit of that in there. You can even cut this out with a pair of scissors if you want. I love that. And then I would take something like this snowflake and then I would get a big die, like a tag die, something like that. Find the spot that you want and just trim that right out and make that into a beautiful tag. It would be gorgeous with pearls. We could turn this into an entire card. So we can add a little bit more um, purple in here. I just have a little purple left on this brush. We can add a little bit of that kind of around the edge here. I'm not really doing much, just whatever's left on the brush, just to add some texture. It's a very rustic look. So that's pretty fun. All right, now let's look at the other side. Now on the other side, we can create a fun wood grained look that's gonna look really beautiful. We can do this with those same purples and blues or we can 
grab a very woody color like craft and then we can just very lightly kind of just rub down over it and create that beautiful reverse image. It's so antique looking and it's the opposite side of the snowflake. And I love how it just gets real dark around the edges. Total vintage look, right? And you see, I'm only going in one direction. I'm not going this way too, because that really does make it look more like wood. Isn't that pretty? And then if you want, you can add after we get enough. The reason why I'm doing so many coats and not just really pushing down is because I don't want it to sink in. So I'm going super light and I'm just doing a lot of coats rather than pressing hard and you know, getting it into the design itself. Okay. Oh no, you were rushing yesterday to get to the live. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to make that look a little bit aged by adding just a little bit of sea glass. Let me find my sea glass. So I'm going to use my sea glass ink cube for this. And I'm going to just test it over here. Yeah. Okay. So real light bits of sea glass. You see how it kind of makes it look like, you know, how wood, when it starts to rot a little bit, like at the beach, that kind of thing where you get that greenish tone. Isn't that so pretty on that side? I love that. It's okay if you get a little bit into it. You know, I got a little bit in the dots there, but that's okay. And I'm just really working my way over this part right here to really deepen up that color. So patina, exactly, Laurie. Thank you. So that is a really fun way to use a stencil, right? Um, yeah, just an accent this way or this way. So I think I might actually end up using this side because I just, all of my cards lately have been very blue and purple and pink. And I think I want to do something that is a little bit more rustic. So I'll just add a little more of this in there too. Kind of like, like getting those lines in there too, because they look like planks of wood. Yeah, I know you have to decide which side to use, right? I guess if you cut it in half, you could do one side one way and the other side the other way. But um, I did a five minute card video where I used this stencil and somebody said, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, I'm really struggling that you, I, I made a tag out of it. So I cut it like here and somebody was like, oh, I can't believe you wasted all of that. But you know, I guess in my mind, I think it's just paper. It's really just a piece of paper. I know it's really pretty, but it's just a piece of paper. So if you throw a little bit away, that's totally fine. So patina is kind of like, I think it's more copper. Like if you get a copper penny and it starts to get real old and it gets that green on it, that's like a patina look. So this kind of gives that patina look. You get the green in there. Okay. Yeah. This is the layering cardstock. All right. That's a good idea. So Christine wets down her cardstock just by touching it lightly with the tidy towel. So just makes it a little bit damp that way. Okay. So this is one, one style. Now let's try something different. Let's do one that is kind of wild and crazy. Like, um, like this one, this is the flower garden stencil. So let's make one like that. Okay. I know you have to save every scrap of paper. Well, you're right, because later we would make like some kind of card using scraps, right? So just keep the scraps because you never know. You might, you might want to use them down the line. <laughs> All right. Quick blood sugar check. Yep, looking good. All right. Tom and I went out for sushi in between work and tonight's live. And I ate spring rolls, so took a little extra insulin. Never know what's going to happen. You'd think after like, I don't know what, like 28 years of having diabetes that I would know how my body works, but I do not. It's an ever-moving target. Okay, so once again, we're going to use the main platform. 
main platform and the rubber mat. Okay, and then we're going to lay down this piece of cardstock and we will use this stencil. I don't know if I want to use this one or if I want to use this one. What do you guys think? So this is Flower Garden and this is Mega Flower. So let's get a vote because this one is going to look really spotty when you color the one side because there's not much to it. It's there's just it's so you can see it's just so sheer. And this one's got a lot more going on. It's got more solid spots and lighter spots. So I think we should try the flower garden. All right, let's try the flower garden. This one's pretty too, though, but we'll try flower garden for this. Okay. And then, I don't know, I have these out. I don't need them. Then we're going to use the blue plate again. This is the embossing plate, and it says it right on there, so... You got to find the one that works with your machine. But I know a lot of you have this Spellbinders machine. Okay. And then we'll get this in here. And I'm going to run it through without that extra piece of paper. It definitely comes, ugh, comes through a little easier without the extra shim. <laughs> it's like a workout. Can I count this as exercise, Tom? Yes. Okay. Now. This one, I feel like I could use a little more embossing on that. Looks good, but not great. And I want to show you, it's very easy to line it up. You, you can find where you were on this stencil fairly easily. You almost feel it slip into place. It locks into place. If you have a big shot, you definitely can emboss with a big shot. I used to do it all the time. I just don't know. It's got... The big shot that I had had like pages that you turned and one of the pages was for embossing. So I don't know exactly how it works. I can't remember. It's been a lot of years, but I had a big shot. That was my one of my first die cutting machines, that and a cuddle bug. And um, you can emboss with either one of those. You just have to, I would just like maybe even Google how to emboss with a big shot and it'll tell you the sandwich. Okay. I do have an electric die cutting machine, Nancy. I've got a Gemini, but it's really loud on camera. So I tend to use this one. Plus most people have this kind of machine and I don't want people to think that they can't do the technique without an electric machine because an elect electric machine is great, but it is noisy. And, um, you know, I want to make sure that everybody feels like they can do it. Okay, so now you can see that's much deeper, not super deep, different than an embossing folder, but still really great texture in there. And then the other side is more recessed. Okay, all right. So I know I love the cuddle bug. I was so sad that they discontinued that machine. It was such a great machine. There was nothing wrong with it. And if you have one and it's still working and you have plates, that's awesome. The problem was they stopped making the plates. And we all know how our plates get warped. And at some point, they're just too warped or they crack. All right. So how about a rainbow for this one? So let's do, we'll do my favorite rainbow blend here. So this is Red Hot Tangerine Twist, Wild Dandelion, Lucky Clover, Turquoise, and Wild Lilac. You could substitute Red Velvet for that. You could substitute Sweet Mango for that, Lemon Drop for that, Jelly Bean for that, Blue Lagoon, Wild Wisteria. So you can have lots of different ink cubes in your collection and still make a rainbow. What causes the cardstock to wrinkle when it comes out? That sounds to me like it might just be too tight. So maybe you need to either lighten up on your shims or maybe your cardstock is a little thick. I'm using the Gina K Designs 80 pound layering white cardstock. So this is a thinner cardstock. Okay, so let's take a look at both sides of this. This to me feels very much like, um, tie-dye almost. So I'm going to start with my yellow ink cube. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you want to go in rainbow order, but I'm going to start with yellow because yellow is the one that's the lightest. And so I don't, even though I do blend ink cubes together, I try to keep my yellow away from the other colors because it does pick up a lot of colors. So let's start with the yellow and 
we'll figure that, you know, these two will go kind of more in the center and then we'll leave enough room for the sides. Okay, so we'll start with this and I'm just gonna lightly rub this color over. Isn't that fun when you see that start to come to life? I love it. Yeah, my Big Shot did come with a plate. So uh, for that, I don't know though, but you must be able to use embossing folders, right? You don't, you can't use embossing folders. All right, now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna work my way backwards. So I'm gonna do the orange next. This is the tangerine. And I'm gonna work that down a little bit into the yellow. This just has such a fun tie dye feel to it. And then the red. Yeah, I do not know how to emboss with the Gemini. I have not tried that yet. That doesn't mean you can't do it. I know you can do it because Crafters Companion makes that machine and they make beautiful embossing folders. Just have to figure out how to do it. Okay, so Lucky Clover, that's where your manual comes in. I'm gonna add a little more yellow, but just to where my yellow is here, just down a little bit. And I'm just like lightly rubbing on top. I'm not squishing too hard. Okay, and there's my green. Okay. Ooh, my, maybe I'm not leaving enough room for my purple. We'll see. Got to get a little bit of purple on there. Just a tiny bit. We, we'll make it. Okay. Okay. So there we have a rainbow pattern in there. Isn't that pretty? So easy to do. But the other cool thing about it is when you get this card in the mail and you see it, you'll see that it's raised. That's what makes it look so cool because you can do a nice um, ink blend in here, but this gives it a different look. It's just different than ink blending through a stencil because it's got all the texture. Now let's try this on the other side. We'll start again with the yellow in the middle and you can see what this side looks like. So this has a lot less surface area. It does have these sections here, but it's got a lot more stringy areas. I like to do both sides and then decide which one I like better after I see them. And it does feel like these all feel very woody. They have a lot of texture because you're just kind of smushing the ink on there. So it's not the same as like that smooth ink blend. It's definitely a different look. We'll leave a little more room this time for the purple. I think we will. <laughs> okay. And the purple. I'm gonna use a lighter purple this time. I'm gonna use the medium lilac. Medium lilac instead of wild lilac. This just has a hair more blue in it. You see that? Okay. So this side is the bumpy side. Everything's bumped out. And this has a lot of the recessed areas. Which one do you like better? It's hard to, hard to decide. They're both so fun. Yeah. And this way you can decide by looking at both of them which one you like. All right, let's try a different a different stencil. Let's try something like um, some of these I've never tried before. Let's try one that's just a lot of texture. Like, should we try the Harvest Flourish? Boy, that's a complicated one. Let's see how it works. I might have even not cleaned that last time I put it away, so. A lot of you like them both. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I didn't clean that one last time I put it back. Oops. Right. It's so fun. And I love to see all the different opinions because there's lots of different opinions. I like the bumped out one. I like the, the bumpy one, the recess. The What's neat about that is you can see that there isn't a right way or a wrong way. It's just a different look. So you can kind of pick whichever one jazzes you the most. 
All right. So we'll do one more. And I think this one, I'm going to do the Harvest Flourish. And then I think I'm going to try to wood grain this one. So I think that will be really fun. I've done this with an embossing folder before, but I haven't done it with the stencil. So let's give it a try, okay? So let's start first by putting some brown on here. In fact, let's take it a step further. We'll do some wood graining on here. So let's do some half inch score lines on this, all right? So I'm just going to go down and score half inch lines. So we'll see how good this looks wood grained because I know it works really great with the embossing folders. But the reason why I'm showing you this technique is because, you know, we've got these beautiful stencils in our collection and we always think that we have to just blend ink through them. But these tools are so much fun and you can do so many more things. It just expands your ability to use that tool. And sometimes, like when you go crafting, let's say, somewhere, maybe you take a bunch of things to a friend's or you go away for a crafting weekend, somebody brings a die cutting machine. You don't have to bring all of your embossing folders. You can just bring a few stencils and you can do both ink blending and texturizing with embossing. So it's just, just opens up more options for you. Okay. So I think I'm missing questions and I don't mean to be. So if anybody has questions, sometimes I can't look up and I kind of depend on Tom to check them for me, but sometimes they go by so fast that he misses them too. All right. So we are going to just run this, this ink pad down. <laughs> I'm making a mess here, but it's okay. It's still going to look good. This is a big piece of cardstock to handle see, but it leaves those white lines behind. And it's okay if we've got all this weird texture. Did I miss anything, hon? Nope, I don't see anything. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we've created just a little bit of wood here, wood look, but we're going to take it up a notch. Yes, Tom does play the saxophone. That was his first, well, was it your first instrument, Tom? It was. Yeah, his first instrument. When I met Tom, we met because we played in a band together. And Tom played the saxophone. And I played the keyboards. Okay. So once again, that plate. And then you're going to put your mat on there. Okay, I did see a question. Question. I saw it. My embossing folders... Ooh, okay, my embossing folder sometimes cut through my paper. Is it because my paper's too thin? Jackie, it could be because your paper is too thin. It could also be because maybe you have too tight of a shim or something like that. So I would definitely, um, you know, consider trying to use a thicker cardstock to see if that works better, misting it a little bit so it doesn't cut, and maybe going a little lighter on the shims if you're using shims. All right, so Harvest Flourish is going on top here. What color was the brown? The brown was Craft. But I'm going to use another brown, too. So Craft is my first brown. So now I'm going to put this on top, right? And I'm going to use this same piece of paper. This is getting thinner and thinner. Carol, yes, you can do this with layering stencils. I would suggest doing your first layer, like the big layer, using color and then embossing that second layer. So the second layer is all raised. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm gonna flip this over and try it one more time. I just wanted to go through one more time to really get some pressure. This is a very delicate stencil. And it feels like it's going through way too easily for me. So I might, I might add one more shim here. And again, this is my 80 pound cardstock, but I've been running it through so tight that it's getting thinner. It really is. It's like spreading out. The fibers are spreading out a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of crafters that are musicians. Okay, this is tight. Will I smash the scores? Well, you know, I probably am smashing the scores, Cheryl, but I don't care because I'll tell you why. Because the score lines, I really wanted those in there so I could create the white lines. If they're smashed now, 
I don't care as much. I hope that makes sense. It was just to kind of create that look. Okay. Oh no, I did it on the wrong side. I did it on the wrong side. I should have done it on this side. Okay, we're gonna do this one one more time. I knew that was gonna happen one of these days. Let's just try it again. Well, we I can show you what this would look like, but it's not gonna look like wood grain. So I'll show you so we don't waste it, but it's not gonna look right. And then we're gonna do it the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna take this ink pad and I'm going to just gently rub this on top. So this kind of looks like burnt wood, I guess, right? Um, yes, you can do this with a Gemini, but I do not know the sandwich. You would have to use whatever sandwich you would use for an embossing folder. Okay, it is still really pretty. So we're gonna go with that, just seeing that that does look pretty, but it's not right, but it's pretty. So it's wrong, but it's better than horrible, but we had to do it. Okay, now don't let me do that again, okay? We're gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna get one more piece of cardstock. Well, I go through the cardstock, don't I? I'm a crafter. Trees are afraid to grow around my house because I'm a paper crafter. <laughs> okay, so we'll make our score lines one more time. Yeah, it is a pretty look. It's definitely a cool look. And it definitely looks rustic and, and rugged, but it's gonna look even prettier when you see the next one. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's one way to use it. The dark ink was dark chocolate. Okay. So now we're gonna do this one more time. Okay. I know what to do next time. I'll show you what to do. I'll show you the error of my ways. And then we're gonna turn one of these into a card. I think I'm gonna do that snowflake. I think I have to do the snowflake. Maybe I'll end up using a piece of this as well. We'll see if it works out. If I don't mess it up. So I'm just doing half inch score lines. Nice big score lines. I had to flip it around because I just couldn't get my hand in there. Okay. And once again, we're going to ink on this side. Well, I could turn it over, but my score lines are going in the wrong direction. So it's not going to work. And my ink, my uh, wood graining part is on the wrong side. So I could turn it over, but it's not going to do what I need it to do. Okay. Okay. This is a big piece of paper. Okay, so you see, that's why those score lines are in there. Really just for me to be able to get this color on there and keep those white lines intact. Alrighty. I think it's going to work out really good, though, because this, this gives me hope. All right, so now we're going to do it the right way. I love happy accidents, though. I'm not going to lie. I do really like this. Wrong and proud. <laughs> Wrong and proud. <laughs> okay. So, again, we have the bottom plate and the rubber mat. And then what I did last time, and this is what you don't want to do, is, I don't know. Here it is. I did this. I put it on top. What you want to do is flip it over and put it on top, right? Because, yes, that's what we want to do. Okay. Okay, that's what we want to do. <laughs> so we flipped it over. I'll just say it one more time. Got this pattern. I'm laying it face down, and then I'm putting the stencil on top. And then that blue plate, my embossing plate, or whatever embossing plate you guys use, is totally fine on top. Then I'm going to put my piece of cardstock on there. I'm going to run it through the way I did last time. Right, never wrong, just different, Debbie. I like that. Yes, I'm sure. I think I'm sure. <laughs> and then I'm going to 
flip this over and I'm going to add that shim in the middle just to make sure I get the, the middle. I hope I'm sure. I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. Okay. All right. There we go. All I know is it's I did it different this time than I did last time. So if last time was wrong, this time should be right. Okay. Yes. All right, so now it looks like nothing. You can see all the texture on that side, right? This looks like nothing, but it will when I get ink on there. So let's get this paper back again. It's a lot of craft. And then I've got the dark chocolate. You don't have to use dark chocolate. I think the right color here would be warm cocoa. That's kind of an in-between. Craft would be a lighter brown. Warm cocoa would be a medium. And dark chocolate would be the darker brown. So let's go with the warm cocoa. All right, ready? Here we go. All right, here we go. There we go. Look at that. That's that carved wood. Oh, I love that. Isn't that pretty? We are learning together. You are right. I love this look. This one makes me so happy. I want to do everything like that, right? So you can see why I like this better than this. This is pretty, but I feel like it just looks like my toast in the morning when I leave it in too long. It's just a little burnt. This looks like carved wood. I love it. And I feel like this and this together are just such a pretty balance in there. I might want to use them together in my card. But knowing that, I think I want to add a little warm cocoa onto this. So I think I'm going to try it, all right? I'm, everybody hold your breath. <gasps> okay, here we go. Just a little warm cocoa. Oh, yes. Look how pretty that is. I feel like it needed it. That was very brave. <laughs> Patting myself on the back for my bravery here. Because <laughs> it was really pretty before. Okay. So now I feel like somehow you might be able to use those two together a little more. Now I'm going to add a little bit of, see how you can see that sea glass in there, that patina look? I'm going to add a little bit to this as well. Because I need that Jersey Shore bench kind of out in the ocean air over the years, kind of greenish tone in there. So I'm going to add a little bit of that in there. And I'm going to go a little heavy to get it in there. Like that, you see? But no embossing folders, guys. No embossing folders. Just stencil. So that is super fun. You got to try this. You have to try it. It's going to blow your mind. I mean, it looks like, you know, like a cool texture and a cowboy boot. It does match my top. Tom, do a front shot. It matches me. Look at that. Almost. I do have a little patina in this, but I'm, this might be a little warmer, but very close. <laughs> okay. So let's go back to that overhead. All right. So. I think either one of these would be beautiful, but I think I'm going to cut this one and make it into a card, and I might make this into its own card. So let's do that real quick. All right, now don't yell at me when I cut these because i got to cut them. I have to. So I'm going to cut them just with the paper cutter here. I'm going to cut them down to... Let's cut this little top off here first. Deborah wants to know, can this be done with cubes? With ink cubes? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely you can. Yep. I mean, I did some of this other stuff with ink cubes. And you can see, like, once the texture dries, you get that same texture. Absolutely you can. <laughs> People don't want me to cut it. All right. So we're going to cut this one down to about five inches. So I know it's scary. Five inches. Okay. We're going to use this half right here. Now we're going to use this half. Let's see, is that five inches? Yeah, that'll be five inches. 
Let's go five inches this way. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go this way. So I'll go five inches by three and three quarters of an inch. That's my ultimate finished size of my snowflake. And yeah, you definitely could use this, but it doesn't really feel like much without. See, that's the thing is I know you could save it and it would be maybe a pretty border, but unless you have this part in the design, it doesn't feel like a snowflake. It feels more like a border. You gotta have that right there somewhere in there to make it feel like a snowflake. But that's okay, this is just a piece of paper. Look, it has purple on the other side. I didn't, I, you know. All right, now I'm gonna get one more piece of cardstock here and trim it down to three and seven eighths. Three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. I love that. That's so pretty together. Okay, let's trim this one down too. We'll make a second card out of this one. This one will take again to the five inch mark. So I'm gonna cut it there and then to the five inch mark here. And then we're gonna take, I'll just cut some of the top off here. We're gonna take that to three and three quarters. Okay, so there we go. All right, and then I need another piece of black cardstock. So I guess I'm going more vintage today than rainbow, but I did want to show you the rainbows because rainbows are always so pretty. Let me just cut this piece of black cardstock in half. Now we're going to cut this one to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And if you don't feel good about cutting these, these are exactly the measurements for Master Layouts 1. I just wanted to have a little bit more. I don't know if I cut that very straight. I should have used Master Layouts 1. Yeah, it's better than horrible. All right. Get this all out of the way here. So we can tape these up together. You're making pizzelles, Diane? Ooh, you're a girl after my own heart. That takes me back to my Italian family in Jersey City, New Jersey. My aunt would make pizzelles for every Christmas. They're so good. Especially when you like dip them in coffee. <laughs> I could have used dark chocolate, Mary. Yes, I could have. The reason why I chose black is because I'm not going to stamp a greeting. And if I were going to stamp a greeting, then I definitely would have stamped the greeting in brown as well. But I am going to use, because I'm running out of time, I am going to use some of our pre-designed sentiment strips, and they're all black. So I wanted to keep with that black feeling. Okay. There we go. That is terribly cut. Look at that. Yeah, Maybe I can move it over and make it not look as bad. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'll move it over a little bit. Okay, better than horrible. All right, so one card can go in this direction. One card can go in this direction. Ah, you know, I don't even know if this is going to end up being a card. I feel like it needs more. I think I'm going to keep this panel as a background for something. And I'll turn this one into the card. It's a tiny splash of bright red. Ooh, yeah, you know, this would be a great one for the poinsettias. That would be really good. Where are those? Let's see if I have those close by. Sorry, I disappeared for a minute, but I'm not gone forever. Okay, so we'll do the word of the day while you're shuffling around there? Yes. Okay. Great idea. Do the word of the day. All right. So the word of the day is euphoria. Euphoria. <laughs> and that would describe when you nail that perfect once in a lifetime color blend 
you experience euphoria. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> Did he just leave <laughs> and go in the dead space? <laughs> Word of the day. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love it. So maybe something like that, some some ephemera, but I feel like it needs more. I need to do like a whole oval thing or a circle thing. I'm just putting that away for now. I'm just going to use that to show people what this video is about. And we're going to put our greeting on here because I think this is all you need for this card. So I'm going to get one big piece of white. You got to try things. But I do so many like bright, clean, and simple cards, and I don't do enough vintage. And when I do something vintage like that, or I remember when we did the torn pages out of a book, you remember the cowboy book, right? That video, I, I really, I really like vintage card making. I just don't do it enough. Okay. And I'm using white card base because I think it's going to really look pretty with that white snowflake on there that really pulls it together. But I will tell you that if you want to bring out a little bit more of that blue, you could use an aqua. And you see how it brings a little bit more of the blue out in there? You could definitely do something like that. So, hmm. But I'll go with the white because that was the original plan. But I like the blue. Yeah, red would be good too. Did you put the cowboy hat on and I missed it? I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> okay. We could put bling on here too. We've got time for bling. All right. Now, yeah, and you know what kind of bling would be cool on here? Because these all kind of feel like a little leathery and stuff, I think a little bit of these metallic things in the gold would be really pretty on here. It would almost give it like studs, that kind of look. So maybe we'll put some of those on. Let's cut our greeting first, and then we'll get into that. So I have um, from our original holiday sentiment strips, I'm going to do Merry Christmas. We're going to keep it very simple. You know, Alicia would turn one of those cards into a steampunk card. Oh, wouldn't she? And that would be super cool. I love that whole steampunk thing. You know who does steampunk so well? Tim Holtz. I mean, he just, he's the master. Oh, I love his cards. I have so much fun watching his cards, him make his cards, and I know you guys do too. He's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna cut this out using the sentiment strip dies. Sorry, I'm squeaking a little bit here. And I don't even know anymore where anything is on this desk, but I had, here it is, washi tape. <laughs> I'm a big Tim Holtz fan, I gotta say. Tom, have you ever watched one of his lives? You gotta see one. When, no. he, when he goes live, he goes live for four hours. Four hours how creative his brain is. He's got four hours of information in there and like he's not even done at the end of the four hours. Me, I'd be at the ER after four hours. <laughs> not Tim. He's amazing. Okay, so we're going to use this little Christmas greeting and we'll just put that here very delicate. I kind of like how delicate that greeting is with that big, bold snowflake, especially in this vintage style. All right, so we'll get that on there first, and then we'll add our little gems. I don't think this card calls for uh, sequins, per se. I feel like these studs, these, like, metallic metal things are going to be perfect. So I got to get their turtles, though. I got to get them all on the right size, right side. They're all on their back weird. Okay. So let me get some Connect Glue. So Lisa wants to know what is steampunk. Can you describe it, Tom? Well, it's kind of a know-it-when-you-see-it kind of thing. It's a style of 
art and um, a lot of gears. Yeah, it's, it, it goes back Metal. to like like the kind of industrial revolution. It's a mixture of um, uh, like wood and old style industri industrial turn of the century kind of thing um, all put together. It's yeah. kind of fun. And then there's something called diesel punk, which is kind of the next generation. Diesel punk. But if you Google it, it you'll get a lot of examples. And then I want to tell you about this pick and stick tool. One thing that makes it easier to pick up things is if you try to go sideways, it doesn't always pick it up. You should go straight down on the gem and it'll pick it up much better. So somebody had called customer service and they said they were struggling a little bit picking up the gems, but um, I'm not sure if they were going straight down like that, because that really picks them up much easier. Thank you, Susan. Okay. So I'm using these bigger ones on these bigger dots, and then I'm gonna go with the tiny ones. They're the harder ones for me to grab because they're always on their back. <laughs> but some of these are good. Okay, so we've got those on there. Now we've got to add a few of these into the snowflake here. So I like to skip. I like to do a big one here and a tiny one there. Tiny one there. Tiny, big. Right in here. I did not think I would like this card as much as I do. I hope you guys do too. So we'll go with a big one like that, and then we'll find a tiny. The worst would be as if I run out of the gold, because I, I use these gold ones a lot. But I use, the, I use all the colors. I like the black, love the silver. There's a lot of them in here. I just have to find the ones that aren't on their back Gotta shake them up a little bit. You can see I'm kind of like rooting through for the ones that are upright. So I can grab them with the tool. This is where I'd be zipping ahead in my pre recorded five minute card videos. So it would seem like, wow, she found those really fast. But I didn't. I was doing this the whole time. <laughs> That's too big. All right, I'll do that. There we go. This one will work. And now I just need to find a couple tinies. Here we go. Can I pull it off my finger? No. Is my finger sticky? Alright. There's one. I only need a couple more. And we're gonna give this card away. And then I'm gonna say it now. I never I never say it. People always say you should say it more. Um, if you would like to give this video a thumbs up, I would love that. That really does help my channel. What that does is when you guys give the video a thumbs up it tells youtube hey some people like this maybe we should share it with other people and so it helps my channel grow so i appreciate that should i do these in here too no i think that's enough so there we go um and then i i got my stats from youtube and 60 over 60% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So if you would do me the favor of subscribing to my channel, boy, I would appreciate that as well. That would mean so much. All right, everybody. Well, here is the embossed snowflake that we did using that stencil. Here's the other idea. Here's the one that didn't work out, but it's still a little cool. 
here here's one that i did with blues and purples i was trying it out you can see the wood grain look with the blues and purples is really pretty too right then we have this one that we did with the rainbow effect so many ideas here and then i did try this one with just purple to see how it looked ah, i really like the snowflake with the blues and the purples but i always do that so i'm really excited that we got to do something vintage all right. Well, shall we give this card away, Tom? Let's give that card away. All righty. All right. Let's give it away. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Wait, we're not on. There we are. We're quite off. <laughs> we're off. <laughs> All right. So who gets the magic snowflake? The magic snowflake goes to... Alicia Singleton. Alicia. Alicia, congratulations. Yeah. Look at that one. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just wondering, and I'm just going to show you, do you think that it would be pretty to have, like, black gems in between there? Like that, black rhinestone, black metal things. Why is that not letting go? Like that. Nah. Nah, too much, right? Too much. Okay. All right. Congratulations, Alicia. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at ginakdesigns.com, and I'll get that out to you. Everybody, this was so much fun. I hope you had fun tonight, and I hope this inspires you to dig through your stencils. Try the layering ones, too. Remember that second layer or that third layer to add that little bit of texture on there and then just lightly ink over with an ink cube instead of using it for blending. It just kind of changes the whole thing up. All right, everybody. Well, we want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah to our, our friends who are celebrating Hanukkah. And Tom and I will be back next Tuesday night after Christmas with another Stampin' Chat Live. There isn't going to be a Thursday Stampin' Chat. We have a big snowstorm coming. I don't even know if we're going to make it to work. Um, and there's probably not going to be a five-minute card video this week just because I'm so busy doing last-minute things. I, I heard something really funny today, and somebody, <laughs> I got to tell you what, what I heard. I got to find it. I think this is so, um, this is totally me, right? I, I love this. It said, um, if you're out shopping today, be nice to retail workers. It's not their fault that you waited until Mary's water broke <laughs> before you went to shop. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> My ladies out there are laughing. I know you are. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I have some last minute stuff to do, too, because I waited as well. Uh, so no extra videos from me this week, but we will be back on Tuesday. Until then, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. We love you all so very much. All right, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.